Hello guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's reading vlog. If you guys didn't see, I did an August TBR video. The TBR jar chose the books that I was going to read for the month of August. Here are our winners. There's one more that I actually already read so we can check that one off of my list. And actually, there's two that I already read. I finished the other one this morning so we're checking two books off the TBR list that's already been read. So we have these books that are left. I thought for today's video we can try to finish my TBR in five days. I'm not the fastest reader. I do think if I sit and lock in I can get through a book faster than when I'm distracted and I do get distracted a lot but I want to challenge myself and try to finish my complete TBR for the month of August and that's what this video is going to be. We have Jackpot Summer by Alyssa Friedland, Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubica, The Dixon Rule by L. Kennedy, One Star Romance by Laura Hankin, The Love of My Afterlife by Kirstie Greenwood. This book will not be in this vlog because I'm reading it for a different video so we're gonna have to move this on the side but I will 100% be reading that book this month. For today's video we have four books that we're gonna try to complete in five days. So since today is the first day, I already started the first book we're going to be completing, which is Jackpot Summer. I'm really excited about this one because it takes place on the Jersey Shore in LBI specifically. I'm so excited. I've been there many times. Just the feel of a Jersey Shore setting in a book is just so fun. I think I'm gonna enjoy it a little bit more with a little bit more bias from someone that's a Jersey girly. This one's a little close to home, which I love so much. If you don't know what this is about, we're following the Jacobson family whose mother sadly passed away. Their father is trying to sell their LBI home, which they've grown up. They go there for 4th of July every summer. That's where their core family memories are. So far, I've actually only gotten 37 pages of the way through, but we're following each of the siblings of the family, and they're all going through personal hardships in their families, in their work lives, and they're kind of going through it, and we're kind of seeing that on the inner workings of each family member. So I haven't gotten very far yet, but I know the gist of it is that they end up going for their 4th of July this year to their house to, you know, clean it out and whatever, and I think three of the four siblings put in money together for a lottery ticket, but I think the gist of this book is going to be less about the money that they win, but obviously we're going to see how that takes a toll on the family, but I think it's going to be more about how family comes first first because they're all kind of like going through it a little bit and they're in very different parts of their lives each family member each sibling specifically so I'm excited to see how it all plays in we haven't gotten to the fourth of July weekend yet right now I've only read two of the siblings point of views so far so good I'm really enjoying it it's obviously more of a contemporary fiction novel than any type of romance so it's gonna be a fun one hopefully again we have five days to complete this and today is day one chapters are so long. I'm really enjoying it, but the chapters are just so long and for some reason that demotivates me to continue reading. I don't know what it is in my brain. If chapters are short, I'm gonna continue reading. I'm gonna flip pages really fast, but when they're really long, I don't know why I feel like I'm like really slowly getting through it. I feel like that's a common opinion or a common, not problem. I feel like that's like a me problem, but I feel like that's common between us readers. We love short chapters or I feel like a, it's not an unpopular opinion to love short chapters, but these are so long and I feel like the pacing's a bit slow like we're almost 100 pages into the book and we haven't even hit the lotto yet we're still getting to know the characters i feel like we're on the fourth and final sibling point of view that we're getting and i think after this one since we'll know like the ends of each character and like how they are in their personal lives and how, what's going on in their personal lives then i think it's gonna pick up a little bit and i love the setting obviously but I forgot that my bookmarks, I got this book as an ARC and in the little package, the package first of all was so cute, but in the package it came with this bookmark, which is actually a lottery ticket and I can't tell if it's a real one. Should we try to scratch this? I've been using it as like the bookmark that it is, but either way, it came with that and it came with this kind of like check. So like if you win the lotto, you get like the check and whatever, but this one says ARC and like the slot over there and then it has my name. It says one lucky ARC of Jackpot Summer. Happy reading. How cute is that? It was such a cute little package, but let's see if I can scratch this. I think this is a fake lottery card? I don't know. Let's see. My handy dandy tweezers that I use to scratch off things. <gasps> it's a real lottery ticket. Oh my god, okay, let's scratch this. Imagine I win the lottery right now, and imagine I never picked up this bookmark if I won the lottery on it, and it was just sitting there the whole time. Okay, I think I won a dollar. Yeah. Wait, that's so fun. <laughs> I didn't win anything else but I did win a dollar which is really fun. I don't know why I thought this was a fake lottery ticket but that was such a sleigh so thank you to the author for putting this in the little package. I wonder if anyone that got the arcs 
hit the lottery. That would be pretty cool. much gonna be just character driven the whole story but I feel like it's nice to watch this family reminisce on all this stuff while they're trying to clean out this house and rehash like their memories from when they're younger they've kind of grown apart as you grow older which I feel like happens a lot like families that grow up and go to different places like over the summer they spend different times together but as you grow up you know you have different jobs different parts of your life you're at different ages and like you kind of grow apart so it's hard to like be at the same place doing the same things as you used to do when you were younger especially with their mom passing recently like she was the glue that had them do all these things together so it's nice to like reminisce with them even though obviously they're fake characters this is all fake but it just feel like it's very relatable for some families that did that and I'm excited to see them over time of them going through this house and winning the lottery like that's obviously going to change all their perspectives but I'm excited to see them kind of connect again because right now they're on very different paths I don't think I'm gonna have too many thoughts while I'm reading this one because I feel like we're just following these characters like I said but the writing style so far is pretty good there's a lot of dialogue mixed within all of the descriptions and stuff again pacing's a bit slow but yeah I feel like I'm not gonna have too many opinions while reading this so we'll see what happens and I'll probably end up updating towards the end of it unless something crazy happens but I feel like this one's just gonna be very character driven not too much happening more like lessons being learned jackpot somewhere not too long ago maybe like 10 minutes ago i ended up switching to the audiobook last night i got maybe like halfway and then it was like slowing down a bit i feel like we hit the peak of the jackpot winnings and everything like that that i needed to switch to over to audio i was getting a little bit bored i feel like it was getting very descriptive in certain scenes where it was like i feel like we could just move on to the next scene it's definitely character driven so i feel like sometimes when that happens and you're like in that scene with the character like it's not much plot going on i get a little bit bored a little taken out of the story so the audiobook definitely definitely helped i highly recommend the audio if you're going to read this and you feel the same way. I feel like the voice actor gave each character like a personality and more character to the characters because when I was reading it I felt like they got a little bit not bland but in my head while I was reading it like the dialogue and what they were doing didn't really put too much into the characters for me if that makes any sense so the voice actor and like the audiobook really really helped. I felt like when I was listening to it I was watching like a tv show of this family and I was thinking that I wish I could watch this as like a tv show because it kind of just focuses more on the effects of the powerball and winning the lottery and going from struggles to like having so much money in such a short amount of time and the themes of like money does not buy happiness and seeing the what people do with the powerball like winnings and having so much money and each sibling using all that money for different things and seeing how it affects all these different people i mean like in real life you hear stories of people winning the lottery and like spending it all really fast and they end up like having people that use them for their money and stuff like that and each sibling was going through different effects of having so much money and winning the lottery so I liked that and I liked seeing them come out the other end and seeing how everyone kind of just came back together and like the themes of like family and everything. I really enjoyed that. Obviously, I loved their jersey references, of course. Those were amazing. Other than that, I feel like I'd give it maybe a three and a half. I don't think it's my favorite book. I don't think I'm going to remember it, but I do think it's a really good summer contemporary fiction novel, especially you recommend the audio if you're interested in this one. The 0.5 is definitely for the jersey references, but I had a good time listening to it. I feel like I just like locked into the audio and I was doing my little tasks and it was just like really fun 
fun to listen to what was happening and seeing the character development throughout the book. So I don't really have too much to say on it, but I'm happy we checked another book off. We are now on to day two of reading. I don't know which book we're gonna start next. I kind of am feeling this one. I'm on like two sides right now. I don't know which one I'm in the mood for completely. So I'm gonna sit here and decide and I will let you guys know which one we start. I feel like starting off, we're doing very good. We're starting off on a good foot. have like the gist of the book I read obviously the summary on the back but I wanted to get kind of how the book was going to be set up before I talked about it we're getting like both timelines so far but 11 years ago this woman went out for a run at night and she ended up going missing and we get the point of view of that really really subtly in the very very beginning of this book and then it flash forwards to present day and you get the point of view of another character and then we're back 11 years ago I think like 10 days after the woman who went running went missing a mother and a daughter went missing and we just found out from her husband that she went missing or they went missing she, he hasn't heard from them we're getting both timelines because we just got present day the daughter of the woman next door who went missing comes back and that's all i know so far so we have three people who went missing one of them 11 years later comes back but we don't know about the other two so far not yet so for the writing style is definitely fast paced like i just sat here and binged the first 60 ish pages of this book but it's not very like descriptive it's kind of just giving like the dialogue and like very surface level what's happening like the sentences are kind of short but that's not a bad thing i feel like i don't really critique too much on mystery thriller writing with like the descriptiveness and getting really deep into the writing I feel like I just want to be here for the plot and what happens. Just tell me as we go what happens. Don't linger on anything. Make it fast paced. That's what I like in my mystery. So I'm interested to see what's going to happen with this one. I'm going to put a little break in the book right now and take a little bit of a break. But so far, the setup is really good. We have different point of views going on. I've been in the point of views of the characters that went missing. So that was really interesting so far. And I'm excited to see how it's going to happen and how it's going to unravel because the 11 years ago timeline when we find out that they went missing through the eyes of the neighbor when the husband came over to ask like, do you know where my my wife is my daughter is we're in the neighbor's point of view which is very interesting so i'm excited to see what's gonna happen what's gonna unravel with this one because we have two missing people back in the day it was three missing people now we have two one has shown up but so far just like the setup and the start of this book is very good hello guys a new background new scenery imagine i was just like hey i moved and i'm in a new place because the background is kind of giving that no we're in new york you definitely have seen that before this video so you know why we're here miss destiny's all the way over there she's doing stuff over there but i thought i should update because today is day three of reading yesterday i got maybe like 112 pages in before bed and then i needed to like do my bedtime routine but i was so invested so i put on the audiobook so i put my headphones on put on the audiobook this is not the type of book for me to be listening to like noise canceling headphones in my ears so i had to turn it off and i didn't read any more last night but the audiobook was really good i was really enjoying it it just got a little spooky because it's literally about three girls who go missing and i was like i cannot be listening to this right now i'm spooked out this morning as i was packing for this trip and like driving to the airport and stuff i did listen to a lot of the book i'm like 223 pages through right now i'm like 60 something percent I feel like not much has really unraveled or happened i feel like the point of views we're getting in this book is so interesting the way that the story's being told through the point of views i'm like a little suspicious and i'm kind of like why are we getting this through your point of view there's like multiple ones going on but in like both timelines like different people that were like surrounding what happened kind of i think if i was reading this book rather than listening to it same thing that happened with the last book i would wouldn't be as like connected or interested in what's going on because the writing style is kind of choppy i think i yeah i tabbed a page just an example very vague and out of context but it just kind of shows kind of what the writing style is throughout the book but as i'm listening to it the voice actor that is like audiobooking it and talking it to me and like telling me the story and reading along with it it doesn't seem as choppy as when i'm reading it i hear their voices one male and one female they introduce themselves josh says hello and tells them his name he invites them inside the officers step in and he closes the door the blinds are open in their house like it's just very simple sentence and I feel like in a mystery book like that's totally fine Like I don't need a lot of descriptions and all of that But for some reason it's a little bit too simple of sentences So the audiobook is really helping and i'm really enjoying listening to the story Like I said, they gave it like personality and stuff. I still like i'm really interested Like I do not have any theories on what happened. I have like one but there's no way that's what it is And i've heard great things about this book So I have a feeling the ending is gonna get me and I hope that it does because of all of the good reviews and good thoughts That I have seen on this book, but I feel like we haven't really learned much other 
then just like different like things that have happened before one of the characters went missing but again it's told in a different point of view than I would expect so I don't really know what part this character plays in the story very interesting there's like suspicious people and suspicious characters of course but I don't really know what's gonna happen today is day three so if I can finish the third book on day three that would be a win I'm actually gonna cheat a little bit and I'm going to skip my little trip of reading and we're gonna get back and finish our last two days when I get home I feel like now that we're like 60% in it's gonna pick up we're gonna find out some more stuff hopefully guys I am now back home like I said I was gone for a few days the first day in New York I counted that as the third day and I ended up finishing local woman missing today I am back home I didn't touch a book after finishing that while I was there so I didn't really count it as part of the challenge so now that we're back today and tomorrow we're gonna finish up this challenge the last two days I have two books left to talk about local woman missing I ended up giving this one a three and a half star which is kind of surprising to me personally because I thought I was gonna give it a much higher rating not that the book was bad I did not guess the ending it definitely took me by surprise there's one thing that I figured out like very early on maybe like the first chapter of the book that I like had a feeling was what's gonna happen and it definitely did but the main plot twist or like what you're trying to figure out that happened like throughout the whole entire story I didn't guess and I love when that happens like that's just like the whole point of like a mystery thriller book you're trying to figure something out and like you really want the author to get you you don't want to obviously figure it out because then it's just like underwhelming but I did give it the three and a half not for like the storyline I enjoyed the story I feel like all the different point of views that we got throughout the book was interesting because it's like you don't expect to be told this story through these people's point of views they're not like fully like the main characters if that makes sense especially we get the brother's point of view and he's talking in like second point of view and like it's really really interesting and I really love the way that she told the story and like through the point of views but it was really just the writing style and like at some points I wasn't really on the edge of my seat anymore I feel like we could have put the pieces together a little bit quicker like I said in like the last clip I was talking about it it's just very choppy and very surface level it was like not descriptive and I know like I said in a mystery book you don't really need descriptions and stuff you don't need like huge long sentences and like really getting into the depth of the characters and everything you kind of just want to get to the point so that we can get to the ending and like it makes it go fast paced but I think it was just very like short sentences and once I noticed that or like noticed something in the writing that like sticks out to me it's all I noticed so again the audiobook really really helped especially giving like character and personality to each character and like the voicing and like making the story feel real like I was picturing like a real deal like mystery that was going on like as if I was watching it like on a documentary series like that's what I love so much about listening to it and just like mysteries in general I feel like are really fun to listen to because it really like brings it to life a little bit more I don't recommend listening to the audiobook sitting in bed like at night with your like noise canceling headphones about like girls going missing like that's not ideal personally for me it wasn't so I wouldn't recommend doing that but I would recommend the book if you just like a classic mystery that like gets you at the end like it has something or like a few things that come up that's like surprising it's not like putting pieces together and you're just like figuring it out as it goes like no it, it did get me so I feel like it definitely is a good mystery and I would recommend it just I think it was like the writing style and like some parts of the story that it was like I didn't love but it was a really good book I did enjoy it and again I really enjoyed the audio of it so now we're on to our third book of the video and I decided to choose the Dixon rule by Elle Kennedy like I said we have this and one star romance left but I think I want to do this one I feel like it'll be kind of quicker because more rom com -y, and I know Elle Kennedy's writing is very fast paced and a lot of dialogue and like that type of romance so I definitely want to choose this one first and see if we can get through this one and how fast we can get through it so this one is the sequel to the gram effect by well obviously by Elle Kennedy. The Grandma Fact is a hockey romance and one of the characters is the daughter of a character from her off-campus series. This one is about the main girl of the Grandma Fact's best friend. Her name I think is, D yeah, Diana. She's a cheerleader and I'm pretty sure she ends up having like a, I think this ends up being like a fake dating situation. I think Shane, who's also on the hockey team, the same one as the main male character from the Grandma Fact. And I'm pretty sure he like annoys Diana because he's kind of like a player and like gets with like all of her friends on the cheerleading team and she like needs to stay away from him or like wants to stay away from him because she doesn't like that. But he ends up moving into the same apartment building as her because they're like in college and stuff so I think that's what the storyline is. I'm very excited about this one because I did enjoy the grandma fact. I liked that one. I like the way that she includes like the hockey and the sports with the romance and all the things. So I have seen good things about this one from people who have read it. I think this one's going to be fast paced. I do think this one's going to be spicy because what came with this book like in the PR, not the PR package, the like arc package. I don't think I can show it on camera but just know the back of this is a graphic of the characters that's like not appropriate for YouTube viewing and then this is actually on I'm pretty sure Elle Kennedy's Instagram when she was promoting the book or when the book was like being announced or when it came out but it's kind of just like the not the roster it's a friends with benefits application for the male main character kind of like filled out and it gives all of like the information about him but like there's a lot on here that's graphic because it is a friends with benefits application so like makes sense and this is just telling how spicy this book is gonna be like I don't think it's gonna be hugely spicy but 
I have a feeling we're gonna get lots of spice in here. So I will give some updates. I am excited though, because I need like a fast paced read. And I feel like this is one is gonna deliver for sure. Actually, the next day, today is day five. It is our last day of trying to finish my TBR and I'm a little nervous. I am halfway through the Dixon rule, which is honestly pretty good because I didn't realize since I'm reading it on my Kindle, I didn't look how many pages it was, but it's like 470 something. I think it's like a bit thicker for a romance book and I didn't realize that when I was on my Kindle. The Kindle book, it says there's like 500 something pages and I just wasn't paying attention. So it's a thicker romance, which honestly I'm not surprised because the grim effect was pretty thick too, but I'm nervous. I'm not gonna finish this and not be able to obviously finish one star romance. I just know myself as a reader. So I think we're gonna fail this challenge, but I think I'm doing pretty good for what the challenge is. But anyway, I, like I said, last night I got to page almost 200 pages, like right near the 200 page mark last night. And then I fell asleep. So I feel like that's pretty good. And then this morning I'm on chapter 28, 53% of the way through on the Kindle. But since the pages are different, I'm just gonna check the pages on here, which is page 255, which is pretty good. I'm a little, little over halfway. So, so far about the book, I don't know if I'm gonna like this one more than the Grim Effect, which I thought I was going to, going into because I really like these two main characters. They're very outgoing. He's not like the broody kind. He's more like playful and she like is very, very confident. She knows what she wants. I feel like their banter is really lacking, which I'm so, so upset about because I love banter in book when they can just like go off each other and like makes me feel giddy and like I'm kicking my feet. Like I love that. And I thought that's what this one's gonna give, but we're like halfway through and I don't feel that feeling, which is very interesting. They do have like a playful manner with each other, but he annoys her mostly, especially the beginning of the book. I feel like she's being a little bit petty about it. He just kind of like annoys her a bit. She kind of plays into it sometimes but it's not what I was expecting with their dynamic and I feel like I'm enjoying both of their stories like separately like I like what she's up to what's going on in her life and everything like that like I'm interested to see what's gonna happen with it and then on his side as well they have like two separate things going on with exes and they're kind of like helping each other out in that way I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this once it gets more emotional like, I feel like it's just like a physical type of romance that's happening because again they have like personal things going on that I just like can't see it getting to that emotional point which obviously we have a lot of time left so it could get there but just right now I'm not really feeling it again I like their characters separately but like I don't know why together it's not making sense in my head just yet i will say though one part of this book that i'm like obsessed with right now it comes out like just a little bit between the characters and like what's going on but they watch this reality tv show and the way it's described and like what they're talking about is literally like the definition of love island like the two of them will sit down together and like talk about the couples they want to get together and who they're voting off and stuff and i'm like this is speaking to a love island lover like i'm obsessed with that and i love that that's part of this book like it's just so fun and then the other part is obviously this is the same world as like the off-campus series that she did like the original one that those characters come come back like their years in the future they have kids and stuff so that's like the point of this series but seeing them come back is just so fun like when they popped up in the Grim effect I loved it so much and because that's such an OG series that I read years ago that was just like it's it stuck with me being an OG series so seeing that like years later and them having kids and stuff popping up is so fun I did think that this series was gonna follow all the kids of all of the characters from the original off-campus series but so far it was just Garrett Graham's daughter in the Grim effect I'm hoping one day she does a spin-off series of all the other children I thought that's what this whole thing was gonna be but there's a lot of hinting and a lot of scenes with the characters that I think are the main ones of the third and final series in this trilogy. So we're getting a lot of that, a lot of build up for that. I wouldn't say I'm disappointed in it. I just think I, my expectations were very high for this one because I thought I was gonna love this one so much because I've seen good reviews. I really enjoyed the first one. I like these characters, but I just think the way the romance is actually playing out isn't my favorite just yet. So we do have a lot left to go in this book. We have like 200 pages, right? Yeah, we have about like 200 pages. So lots can happen in that amount of time. Hopefully we'll be finishing this. That's the main goal is finish this and start one star romance. I'm gonna finish one star romance sometime this month to finish up my 
GBR, but I don't think I can finish this one in one star romance today, but never say never, you know? It's a Sunday. I don't really have any plans either way. So I'm gonna go sit. I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna do my laundry. I might put on the audiobook for a little bit so I can get some tasks done, but also keep up with the book because I am liking the storyline. It's just like the two of them together. So and also the thing that was in my book is friends with benefits application. And that's actually in the book. So if you've read the book, you like know what's on this paper and it's funny. That's all. I'm gonna go continue this and I will be back in a little. Something is happening. I'm like picking up on it like slowly and I think I've sussed it out and I think it's gonna happen and I feel like that's gonna like not connect them but that's gonna give more depth to the characters. I feel like maybe that's what it is. We don't really know much about our characters on the emotional level. So I'm like listening to it and it's like subtly in the background of what's like going on in like the dialogue and I'm like, I think I know what's gonna happen. Not that I'm trying to be like detective over here but you know when you can like pick little pieces up that the author's like putting down in a book and you're like, yeah, that's gonna show up again. I think I've clocked it but I started listening, I'm making a matcha. finished the Dixon rule. I actually listened to majority of like the second half. I did read like on and off. I was going between honestly so many different formats the physical the kindle and the audiobook i got my sunday chores going with the audiobook i'm cleaning my sheets over here i still have the same feelings i feel like i don't have many more thoughts than my last time i was talking about it other than the second half i feel like deals with heavier topics than i was expecting in this book like we really delved deep into that which i appreciated see like when romance books aren't just rom-coms which sometimes i do like a good old just rom-com cheesy you know upbeat book but i do like when they deal with heavier topics because it gets like not just relatable but also more depth and emotion and stuff and deals with stuff that real people in real life like that's some people's reality so I like when that happens and this book definitely did that which I appreciated but I liked the storyline it kept my attention the whole time I enjoyed going along with our characters and especially listening to it again I've been loving my audiobooks in this video specifically but recently I've been loving listening to it because it just gives the characters more than my brain can do and helps me visualize things so much better but again I feel like our characters aren't my favorite which is so sad because I had such high hopes for this one I feel like Shane I was expecting him to kind of remind me a little bit of Isaiah from Play Along if you guys read that one like very playful and outgoing in the banter field and I feel like their banter was just like lackluster for me so I didn't love them together. I mean, by the end, obviously I was rooting for them and I did enjoy their relationship as it like had their happily ever after, but I don't think they're gonna be my favorite couple ever. I do like Elle Kennedy's writing in this one. It's definitely fast paced, you know, scenes aren't dragged out. We're going from one to the other. The pacing's really good, but I don't think it's gonna be one of my favorites. So I think I'm gonna give this one three stars, which is a little sad again, because I think my expectations were just really high for this book, but I don't really know if I'm gonna really think about this one or remember it too much. But if you do like hockey romances, if you like friends with benefits trope, if you like fake dating trope and all of that, and also like kind of like found family within like sports groups, and stuff and also a very funny side characters because they live in the same apartment complex and we get into like the HOA meetings and the neighbors and all their personalities bring a lot of like humor into the book which I really like that especially like small town romances this isn't a small town but like you know in small town romances the side characters are huge personalities and make it like kind of like humor filled that's what the side characters in their little apartment complex did at this one for sure there were definitely parts of this book that I enjoyed and definitely kept my attention like I said but I don't think it's gonna be one of my favorite romances I would recommend it though if you liked any of those things on to our last book of the video and not the last book of my TBR there's one more on my specifically August TBR that I'm gonna finish this week So we have two more technically but one more for this video and that is one star romance by Laura Hankin Like I said, I've got 74 pages into this book I do think I'm gonna start it over because I don't remember I started this like two months ago and honestly can't even remember our main character's name So I'm gonna start this one over this one I think is gonna be less rom com -y, more maybe general fiction women's fiction mixed with romance That's what I felt when I first started this like we were definitely not getting into any of the romance At least in the beginning from what I read she is the maid of honor He's the best man to the bride and the groom and our main girl character is an author before the ceremony starts she realizes that our male main character read her book and gave it a one star now they gotta walk down the aisle together and i'm assuming that starts kind of like a i wouldn't say an enemy situation but she definitely probably won't like him so i can't see myself finishing this but i also feel like i finished this pretty quickly so i have more time on this one but i don't know we'll see how it goes i'll give you guys some updates and fingers crossed we can get through a good amount of this book
just reading that one email on the first page of this book sparked exactly what happened like in my memory like i remember now how it started how we got to the wedding the boyfriend of the friend who's they're gonna get married they're gonna engage in whatever sends an email to everyone saying we're gonna surprise gabby for her birthday and everything and then that's kind of how it starts and that's how our two main characters meet and then i'm pretty sure it fasts forward to the eventual wedding and that's where i think the chunk of the summary is gonna start it's funny when you like read a book and soft dnf it and then go back into it and you like feel like you don't remember anything and how easy it is to like spark your memory because this one i feel like i already know the whole 74 pages we're gonna get into but i'm still gonna read all of them just to keep my memory fresh i might throw on the audiobook though because i've been eating up the audiobooks of all the books i've been reading recently so maybe the first 70 ish pages i'll listen to just to get me back on track and then maybe we'll read some of it i don't know but we'll definitely go back and forth because i'm just loving audiobooks right now one part which I actually tabbed while I read it the first time like I put a little dog ear on it and then as I was listening to it I was like this is a good quote cool. and then I went over and I was like wait I already dog eared this part he asks her why she wants to write and it says there have been moments when I've read something in a book that feels like it was written just for me like the author reached inside my brain took all the thoughts I didn't know how to express and put them into a perfect paragraph and in those moments I felt so utterly connected to a person I didn't know that it made me think yes the world can be hard and people can be awful to each other but there's also such beauty in the fact that we can recognize each other like that I want to be able to give that feeling to other people, which there is nothing like connecting to a character in a book and having an author kind of write down how you feel so like perfectly and vividly. Like it's just like one of the best feelings. Honestly, I agree. Like I could write something and I could put words together. Like sometimes I can't articulate my thoughts, but like when you read something and the author describes it and writes it down so perfectly and what you were trying to think and say, it's just so wonderful. And I was like, that's so true. And I love that. And there really is nothing like the author writing something that you also feel, but like not knowing how to word it and they just word it like just right. That was only on page 21 but that was a really really good little paragraph now the next day the challenge is completed I did fail it but honestly, I feel like I did a pretty good job. We had four books in five days and I finished three out of the four of them. I didn't get too far into this book last night. I ended up going to dinner and I was just like trying to read before bed and then I fell asleep reading. So I got 86 pages in. I got to chapter 10, which honestly I feel like it's pretty good. I got past the part that I was at last time when I softy and it. So that's a plus, but I didn't end up finishing it. I feel like I did pretty good with this challenge. I feel like it was fun to challenge myself just in general to get through my TBR. I definitely want to try every single month if I do set a specific TBR to complete it obviously sometimes months go differently than you expect you don't get to all of them but i would love to try to get to all of the tbr books that i put on it for the specific month when i can i don't really have too many thoughts on this book to give other than really like the writing style again it's giving more like fiction women's fiction being in our main characters it's actually third person but like being in her point of view kind of there was one part that i tabbed that i can't really say because i feel like it'll give a little bit of a spoiler but we got one chapter really short in like the male main character's point of view again third person but the two of them eventually met you were supposed to leave to go back home like this whole thing if you have read this book it happens on page 30 so if you know you know it was really really good i'm hoping it picks up just a little bit i feel like it will because we're again we're still early on in the book but i feel like we're at the main point of the story she kind of just found out that he left the one star review so now i feel like it's really gonna pick up and i feel like they're gonna have to figure this out or communicate about it or I don't know. Who knows? Again, I'm going to continue this one and finish it throughout this month. So it will be in my August wrap up. You guys will definitely see my rating, my review and everything. But I hope you guys enjoyed following along with me trying to get through my August TBR and challenging myself. I feel like if there's any way to get me to finish my TBR or get books off my physical TBR in a challenge way, I just love it so much. I think it is so fun. Let me know any books that are on your August TBRs, any book recommendations you have for me for coming up in September or October the following months. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you did. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you've read any of these books as well, your thoughts and opinions on them. I feel like I was kind of like average through star so hopefully this one will be a little bit higher of a rating which so far right now i feel like it might be again i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you hopefully in the next one bye